Who the hell are you? A remnant of the time long past. There has been an awakening. It's the Riley and Kimmy Show. Have you felt it? Well, hello out there. It's me, Winnie the Pooh. And don't forget to remember to stay tuned to the Riley and Kimmy Show. And don't forget to remember to keep on bouncing, says Tigger. <laughs> Now, it's okay to bounce unless you're in a car or on a motorcycle, especially with the uh, Daytona Bike Week thing going on. You don't want to be bouncing. Not at all. I mean, don't do it. I have. I used to have a motorcycle. And, you know, the way I would bounce is go over speed bumps a little bit too fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought I was Evil Knievel. Mm-hmm. You know, I tried to, just like I got that Evil Knievel action figure up in Jacksonville mm-hmm. at a recent uh, show, toy show. You know, I used to do that kind of stuff. I'd jump. It was crazy. Don't do that. Mm. We do not recommend doing that at all, especially on episode 434. But, you know, we will be doing a lot of bouncing on this episode, Kimmy. Yeah. We're going to be bouncing all over. We're, we're maybe more like a pinball. Man, does anybody know what those are anymore? It's not like a pinball going around a pinball machine. You know, mm. we're going to be banging all the bumpers and everything. And okay. let's hope we don't tilt on this show. All right. Have you ever played pinball? Mm, yeah. Well, matter of fact, I think you had a pinball machine in your basement as a child. Did you not? I thought you guys did. You had a bowling thing. Didn't you have an actual yeah. bowling? Um, Oh, well, bowling? Yeah, you had bowling, right? You had yeah. a, a bowling thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking like little plastic pins and everything. You actually had like a, a little mini bowling alley. Mm-hmm. And didn't you have a, a pinball? I think there was a pinball machine in I there, thought... but I don't think it ever worked. I don't I don't know. Uh, I thought I was eyeing that at one time. Anyhow, I was going to say I was wondering if you ever tilted the uh, pinball machine. Mm-hmm. Did you ever play pinball in an arcade or anything mm-hmm. like that? Was it getting... Were you one of these that shook the machine and everything? Mm-mm. Are you really gentle with the flippers? Were you gentle? Mm-hmm. Oh, I bet you were. You didn't get angry or anything with that, did you? Mm-hmm. Well, see, I had an older half relative, and how can you be a half relative? Well, you know, half brother, who, I mean, he was a big guy. And mm-hmm. I mean, 20 years my senior, and basically a father figure to me. He took over the role. He was one of my mentors and one of my father figures that, because, you know, didn't really have a dad. And, but he was a big guy, you know, and, nice as can be larger than life but he and the pinball machine just did not get along very well and he'd start shaking that thing and you know it just always blew because i'd end up winning because he'd get mad and shake it and tilt and lose Mm -hmm. every time and he was weighing over 500 pounds at the time so he had a lot of uh tilt capability (laughs) if you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i was kind of a little dude (laughs) next to him there and i never did tilt the machine Mm -hmm. I don't know about now, but I never did. So we're going to be like that pinball going around because one of the things we're going all over the place in the world of nerdum here, Kimmy, it is a throwback Thursday, Kimmy, episode. If you're listening to 434, the day it is uploaded. And being a throwback Thursday episode, I tell you what, we have something to me is one of the ultimate nerd things. And that is we have a rare, I mean it's rare, piece of ear candy as I like to call it going back to the golden age of radio now before I you hit the snooze button here and go <laughs> and old stuff this is really important to the world of nerddom to the world of geekdom to the world of freakdom because if you like conventions if you like cosplay if you occasionally like a comic book and you like the stuff that's on TV now all the superheroes and in the uh, cinema world you know with Marvel and DC This is so important because this one person, this one individual, basically made it so all of us nerds can have all those things. Do you have any clue who that is, Kimmy? Um, Siegel? Ah, Jerry Siegel or Joe Schuster. You're correct. The creator, co-creator of Superman. We have a very rare recording of him right after, I mean, Superman's not that old, Uh right after he created Superman. We got more details with that. And it, it has information I'm sure you've never heard before. His voice will be shocking, I think, Okay. with this. And I think it will be fascinating to all nerds out there. It is something to check out. It is a rarity. So we will be getting that here on episode 434 of the Riley and Kimmy show. Yes, we'll be going back in time. And we're sort of going back in time, but not that far back here with uh, somebody who needs our help. He needs your help. And that is a very talented local artist, an artist who's based in the Orlando area, Central Florida area, very gifted. Matter of fact, go to our website at RileyandKimmy.com, or if you are linked to us on social media, you can see it right on our Facebook page. I have some of the art that I am proud 
to have displayed in the Riley and Kimmy Show studios of an artist by the name of Sean Surface. Now, Sean Surface is gifted, is he not, Kimmy? Yes, he is. And I'll tell you something. I wish I could do a show and tell with this episode because Sean is an individual who is or has designed the Riley and Kimmy Show's new logo. Mm-hmm. And he he uh, you know gave us a sneak peek. And it was what's called a proof. You know, do we give thumbs up, thumbs down, need changes, do this, that? Well, I tell you what, this was so beautiful. I about cried when I saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I had, you know, he, boy, I don't think the guy either sleeps or he gets up really early. I'm not sure which it is, but it was very early in the morning. I got this sample and I actually made sure you were awake to see it. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, oh, you know, get that sleep out of your eyes. You got to check this out. I was, I was bouncing around like Tigger. I showed it to you. And you freak too. Mm-hmm. It is that good. I wish I could share it right now. I cannot. I will give information in the near future when I can debut this. But it is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And his work is beautiful. And you can see samples that I can reveal right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Three different samples I have. Two of them were for free comic book day. They are just gorgeous. His Spider-Man that is in there is, is fantastic. And the other one as well. And I have a Superman family one, which is I, he, he does Superman in a very cute way with this, and, and it kind of reminds me of a, a Silver Age style. Uh, and, you know, I'm a big fan of crypto because we have a crypto. Matter of fact, crypto's right here in the studio right now. Maybe crypto will make a noise or two. Who knows? Because I've just plopped down crypto's dinner. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, Maybe not the smartest thing on earth for me to do, but I did because crypto likes to eat while we record. So if you do hear some slurping, by the way, that is not Kimmy uh, drinking on this episode. That is... Uh, well, that's really crypto drinking out of a big water bucket. Mm-hmm. I have this huge water bucket. So that's going on. Anyhow, I have a thing for crypto, and Sean Surface has crypto on that sample art, on that print that we have, and he's treating Superman sort of like a fire hydrant is the best way to put it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, Sean needs your help. He has a Kickstarter campaign going on for a comic book that he, I mean, it is. I think he has just given everything except blood. Maybe he's already given blood in the ink. You know, they did that way back when, according to Miss, with Kiss, when Kiss did a Marvel comic book, all the members of Kiss gave their blood into the ink. Mm. Yeah, no, I don't know if that was really just a marketing you know, mm-hmm. thing or if it was real. But supposedly, all the members of Kiss at that time, Gene Simmons and I think Stan Lee and um, uh, Chris, I, I don't remember who else, uh, you know, they, I don't know if they pricked their finger or, you know, hmm. you know, pulled out a machete. <laughs> I don't know what they did. Anyway, they, they bled into the ink. Hmm. And so they were always going through the ink right there, right through all the pages. Anyhow, I don't know if Sean maybe did that with this, but you know, he's put everything into it and he has hit a speed bump, if you will. But what I thought we would do First of all, we have links to his Kickstarter campaign right on our website, RileyandKimmy.com. But being a throwback Thursday, and I, I could not get him on the show right now. I didn't want to ask him. The reason is not because he's, he's invited anytime he wants to come on the Riley and Kimmy show, but I know he is extremely busy right now with commissioned art, uh, trying to you know catch up. But he's busy trying to get Mandy off the ground because finances are tight. And I'm sure he does not mind me mentioning that part. And... You know, I, I know he can't even, you know, break away for just a few minutes to talk to us. But I thought, you know what? We don't need him to do that right now. Be nice to have him because being a throwback Thursday, we did interview Sean Surface not that long ago. Mm-hmm. Well, it was last year. It was really late last year. It was in November, November 9th of 2014. We were at Smash Comics anniversary party. It was when they were under another name. Mm -hmm. And we were at, so if you hear the other name, that's not what they're called anymore. They are Smash Comics. And I thought we would replay just that interview with the master artist, Sean Surface, and let him talk about Mandy in a way that I cannot do. So let's go back in time here. Let's go to November of 2014 and check in with Sean Surface. And then coming up, we have more of uh, that uh, voice from the past with Superman and I got information about a cosplay contest coming up in Central Florida and a comic book toy show. So right now, let's check in with Sean Surface. One of the most talented local artists I've ever come across and the most animated, that is Sean Surface. Hello, Sean. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing quite well. And no, you can't have my jacket that I'm wearing. 
<laughs> that's okay. I, I don't think I'll be able to fit into it. Oh well, I, I guess that's a. I guess wait. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. I can't tell. Unless it comes in a three X or four X or tent size. I can't wear. Oh come on, be nice here. <laughs> now I, I'm looking at your beautiful work here. You have now. You're an independent artist, correct? Pretty much. Yep. Okay, and you have some material here, like. This is Bubba the Werewolf, is that correct, the right title? Yeah, Bubba the Redneck Werewolf, he's uh, created by a uh, fellow, a friend of mine named Mitch Hyman, and I uh, wrote, he actually gave me my start, and I wrote my first issue with his character, and I've drawn a few issues of the book. Okay, and you have that as a sample here. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty certain you can probably get your material through your website or through a site available. Yeah, uh, just contact me right now through Facebook. Uh, just type in Sean Surface and, at Facebook, and you're pretty much talking to me, and I'll, I can help out with anybody who wants to find the material. Okay, and I also have a link right on our website, RileyandKimmy.com. Now, what am I holding here? Is this a new project that you have? That's my first creator-owned project. Uh, it's a book called Mandy, and it's an all-ages fantasy about a little girl who turns out to be a sea nymph, and she's discovered floating in the Crystal River here in Florida, which is famous for its manatee population of, and fishing. And uh, she's discovered by a marine biologist who is there to study the manatees. And uh, it kind of starts off dark because he thinks she's a drowning victim. But he, he, when he rescues her and uh, sees her up close, he kind of figures out real quick she's not a normal little girl. And she's actually uh, more like an amphibious type uh, creature. But um, he kind of nurses her back to health and raises her as his own because uh, he kind of had a daughter of his own and he lost her in a tragic circumstance. So he kind of sees this as a second chance at, uh, at, a, at a great life. Okay, and I'm, I'm trying to look at the uh, the style here or the coloring here. It's almost like a watercolor you have going here. Well, I'm, I'm a slave to Photoshop. I used to, I used to hand color a lot of stuff, and I still do it on occasion, but uh, it's just quicker for me. It's a learning process, and uh, I recommend it for, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of artists in the business use Illustrator, but I just always found it easier to work with Photoshop. And so I use Photoshop a lot. It's easier to do the shadowing and the shading. I don't have to worry about or get schizophrenic about it coming out looking right. And I went for, my usual style is pretty detailed, but with Mandy, I went for uh, more for a manga or anime look because I was inspired by the works of Hayao Miyazaki, who's done great work like uh, Kiki's Delivery Service and uh, Princess Mononoke. And he's one of the key inspirations in the style of, of the look of the, of the books. So... And one of the things I like about your work, you have some, uh, I have a sample, matter of fact, hanging in my studio of what you did with the Superman family. And, oh, yeah. and, and talking about animals, you have Crypto doing something to Superman on one of those. Uh, using Superman as a fire hydrant would be the safe way for me to put it. Yeah, well, he's, he's, a, he's a super dog, but like, I'm sure like all dogs, he had to get housebroken. I know, I have five, <laughs> I have five dogs in my house, and uh, one of them still is not housebroken. <laughs> Hell yeah, I've had my... Had my fair share of dogs in, in my life, so I, I I know the trials and tribulations that go through it. Well, you you draw a great dog. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Or, or as Jesse Pinkman says from Breaking Bad, you're a great drawer. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, the dog's name is Jack. It actually is Jacques. I named him after Jacques Cousteau, and she has a pet tortoise named Darwin, and uh, it's just like her little confidant. She hangs out. She's more. She's got more in common with animals than she does with human beings, so she has a little more to relate to with them. Sounds like Kimmy. Kimmy's exactly like that. And we have a tortoise in the house as well named Kal-El. Oh, you going to let him talk to you like that? <laughs> no, that's kind of true. <laughs> okay, well, it's true. That's right. Well, Sean, I will have a, a link to your material. I hope people will check it out. Give it a, give it a good look. Um, you have stuff here that make great gifts uh, for the holidays coming up, and they can find more on our website, RileyandKimmy.com. Thank you for letting us talk to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, like I said, Mandy will be out in December, and I'll be doing store signings and convention setups, especially Megacon next year, and I'll be promoting her to the best of my ability. Now, that was an interview from November of, uh, let's see, November 9th of 2014 at Smash Comics with Sean Surface. And Sean did make some references that Mandy was going to be out by the end of the year of 2014. Well, Mandy didn't make it. And that's because he hit some uh, roadblocks and he needs your help to make it happen. And you can be a superhero and help out, Sean, make this beautiful art come alive. I mean, it's gorgeous, isn't it, Kimmy? Yes, it is. And yes. 
you know, if you'd like to help out, we have the Kickstarter link right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Any amount helps. And, you know, uh, you can pledge a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. And matter of fact, he has various things. If you donate a certain amount, you know, certain tiers, uh, you get something. You know, example, a uh, pledge of $20 or more, printed Mandy issue number one, signed, your name listed on the thank you page. That's kind of cool mm. there. Mm-hmm. That's for 20 bucks. Uh, let me see if I'm going here. Uh, number 35, printed Mandy issue number one, signed, your name listed on the thank you page, limited edition, uh, pin up, and it's got some other things there for that. And, you know, $50, there's also something for 75 and 100 all for Mandy. And, I mean, it is, you know, I, I want to see this happen because, first of all, it's right here in our backyard. Mm-hmm. It, and we we get not one dime, one nickel from this at all. No. We, I mean, we, we're very careful who we endorse or support. And we know quite a few gifted artists out there. I mean, fantastic individuals that are local. I won't mention them right now because this is Sean's spotlight. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Sean needs our help right now. Mm-hmm. And he needs he needs your help. I know he's a little bit shy about this kind of thing, and but he doesn't want to see his dream fade away. And this could be something that could be a big help. Now, as he points out on his Kickstarter campaign that he's been drawing most of his life, he is self-taught. Now, that to me is amazing. Mm-hmm. I love hearing that and seeing that. Um, you know, I tried that route and, well... I, I went to the caveman school of drawing, obviously, <laughs> if you see what my work is. Now, he studied from Da Vinci to Jack Kirby and has spent countless hours practicing and working out a style and technique. He specializes in comic, science fiction, and fantasy subject material. He does logo design. Yes, he does, just like ours, which I wish I could reveal, but I can't yet. And he also does an occasional portrait and life illustration. That's just how talented he is. Mm-hmm. He is extremely talented. And this could be your opportunity to help him and make a very nice uh, project come alive. I mean, it's it's going to be family friendly. This this comic book, and and that's rare in in today's time period. A lot of comic books, and I'm not knocking this at all. Uh, to me, they're not really that friendly for a younger reader to get into comic books. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of the material is extremely dark uh, that is out there, and and we need some other material as well some escapism, some mm-hmm. fantasy work. And that is achieved, I think, by Sean Surface very, very well. So if you'd like to help out, go right to our website, RileyandKimmy.com. And I hope in the very near future, we can announce that Mandy can be in your hands real soon. Mm-hmm. I am hoping. Now, I do believe that uh, he ha- he's, he's in the inking stage, I think. Mm. You know, I'm not 100% on that. I think he's doing, you know, like the, the balloons and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, lettering and stuff. I mean, he's doing the whole thing himself. Mm. You know, I mean, we, think about that. Some of these uh, high-end artists, like we know, not bashing anybody who's a friend of the Riley and Kibbe show. Some of them, you know, they pencil and then they pass it on to somebody who inks and then to somebody else who does lettering and, you know, the process. But mm-hmm. uh, Sean is a one-man show. You okay. know, think of him as the Robert Rodriguez of comic books, the Orson Welles, and he's doing the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, slow process, yes, but, you know, his soul is in this. And I hope, I just hope people help and we can announce in the very near future that Mandy will be available. And we'll also uh, point out and, and post the places where Mandy will be available for, uh, you know, pickup. Okay. So I'm sure your local comic book shop will be able to get it in the very, hopefully, very near future there are people who think that we are different we are different people who think that putting on tights or a mask and a cape and trying to save people is an act of madness yes it is madness and evil i'm mad at that hurt you yes i'm somewhat look the point is that there are places where they put superheroes to try to cure them to to make them normal if you will normal he gets well, you don't want to be normal. You want to put on the mask. You want to put on the paper bag. You want to cut out the eye holes, and you you want to cosplay, don't you, Kimmy? Mm-hmm. And one of our very good friends. Well, he's just not a good friend. He is a big friend for the Riley and Kimmy show, and that is the professor of cosplay, Marco. Uh, he alerted me to a costume cosplay contest that is happening in Central Florida, right near to the Riley and Kimmy show. Right, matter of fact, right in our uh, backyard, if you will in a town called Orange City, which is right between Daytona Beach and Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. You've heard us talk about Deland, Florida before. Well, Orange City's really right in that 
little metro, mm-hmm. right? The best way to describe it, right? Yep. You drive from one town right into another. And that's mm-hmm. just one of them you happen to hit. Really, really nice area. And there's a cosplay contest that's going on. Now, this is going to be a Marvel themed costume contest that's happening. And a little bit about this event. We have, by the way, all the information available right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Now, it's the best costume for ages 18 plus. They have, now, they, what's really cool here is they have a breakdown in ages, which I really like. Now, we have attended certain events where they just have, you know, every age all together. Mm-hmm. Now, I've talked to this to some other people, and they're like, oh, that's okay. To me, I, I, I don't like that. I think there should be a kids category, a separate from the adult category entirely, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well, they, they've done this. Now, they have best costume for ages 18 plus, win a trophy, front cover of their gaming magazine, free photo shoot with your costume, gift certificate for breakfast at, let's see, Reagan's Orange City Kitchen, The Rock. Uh, yeah, free week at USD and MMA Fitness and one hundred dollar gift certificate. Wow! Yeah, that's a big wow there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, best costume for ages four to seventeen. You cannot play this one, Kimmy. You, you can't. Anyway, wins a trophy, free photo shoot in costume, and also will be featured on the gaming magazine. Free week in the no bullying program at USD and MMA Fitness, and fifty dollar gift certificate to Toys R Us. Ooh. Yeah. Now, isn't that kind of cool? Uh-huh. Now, the theme is Marvel. The costume must not be bought as a costume or a set. Be creative, have fun, involve the kids, and they judge based on creativity and thinking outside of the box. Now, can your version of any Marvel character, old school look, or maybe a new school look, whatever you decide to create will all be in the competition. And we have a you know link to all this information right at our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Now, I cannot reveal what the professor of cosplay is going as. Mm. He is going. Okay. So I'm telling the adults, not the kids, you better step up your game. Mm-hmm. He is the professor of cosplay. That's right. I mean, this is like the master Yoda mm-hmm. of cosplay, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, th- this guy's good. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is very good. Yeah. Now, we have known him for years, even when we weren't friends. Uh huh. I don't mean we we're enemies or anything. We just didn't you know, right. associate. But he always stood out. I have pictures probably of him at so many conventions and events over time. When he and I, you know, didn't even talk to each other. Uh Uh-huh. And so that's, it's kind of cool to see him perform. I've always enjoyed seeing him at an event. So even if you don't want to, you know, perform in this thing or be in the contest, you got to go, especially if you're in the Central Florida area, it'll be fun to see. It's a Saturday night. What else would you going to do? Yeah. You know, Uh, yeah, like, come on, you're like us, you know, don't have a life. You're a nerd. Saturday night? Yeah. What are you going to do? You can see Cinderella during the day and then go to the cosplay thing at night. Yeah. Right? That's right. And I think this is a fun event for the whole family to get involved. Now, Marco and I have seriously talked in the past about how families are getting involved in cosplay now. And we have seen this before at certain events, you know, where the family dresses up. Matter of fact, you have uh, some colleagues of yours during the day day career that are doing that at like at MegaCon mm-hmm. and some other conventions. And we've known some people who've done it at like spooky uh, Empire Convention in Orlando and things like that. You know, the family dresses up as, well, zombies or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they have a great old time doing that. And I, you know, that's what you can do with this. And you know what? Hey, grandparents, you could do this as well. Sure. There's no reason why you can't. There's no age restrictions to cosplay. Marco and I have talked about, the professor of cosplay and I have talked about 70 plus year old individuals cosplaying at conventions. Mm -hmm. It's not unseen now. It's not unheard of at all. Mm -hmm. So whatever Marvel character you like, hero, villain, whatever, bring them out. I mean, maybe you like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There's quite a few there that you could be. Uh, An Avenger, right? Mm -hmm. Fantastic Four. Mm Mm-hmm. No, you can't cheat and be the invisible girl and she's invisible. That's right. That won't work. (laughs) That one you cannot do. That's off limits. But there are so many characters, Spider-Man, whatever. And you know what? I've kidded before, but I'm being serious here. If you are, especially a little younger, if you're creative with uh, your drawing, you got crayons, you know, make the mask out of the paper bag. Why not? That's right. Show your art. Show your skills. I'd rather see that than, you know, somebody trying to, you know, cheat, you know, with the store bought costume. Mm. You don't want to cheat. Don't do it. Don't mm-hmm. make us. Don't make us. Don't don't make that smile turn upside down on us. You know, no, 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 <laughs> don't want to do that. So 
If you want to find out more about this great cosplay contest, go right to our website, which is RileyandKimmy.com, and you can find out more right there. As you know, I'm quite keen on comic books, especially the ones about superheroes. I sure am. Also, all types of comic books. And if you are like me, or you know somebody's getting into comic books for the first time, some place to go to if you're in the Orlando area is coming up, not this Saturday. Let me take a look at the calendar here, but uh, coming up the following, which will be the 21st and the 22nd, Saturday and Sunday of March. And in Orlando, it's the Comic Book Connection, the CBC, the comic book toy show that will be happening. I can't wait, Kimmy. Mm-hmm. I mean, as... You and I have talked in previous uh, episodes. Joe, who runs the show, the promoter, the guy brings a freight liner full of stuff. It takes like 12 hours to set up. Mm. I mean, he has tons of things. I'll give you an idea just straight right from his Facebook page. Hey, everyone, the Jacksonville show is over, and I might add it was a record-breaking show. Gave away over 2,500 free comics, not to mention over one thousand dollars indoor prizes Woo! yeah now can't wait for orlando show next weekend who knows i may have to give away over 3500 comics i'll have all the info on my news page of my website a little bit later i hope to see everyone there and we have a link right to his stuff right on our website at rileyandkimmy.com now i hope to see you there i hope to see all our friends all our cosplaying freak friends and i use freak in an affectionate type way not as a negative and we hope to meet new friends and that will be at this big event the comic book connection toy show comic book show happening in orlando not that far off so uh, put it down in the calendar in the phone whatever you need as a uh, you know reminder right mm-hmm. Yes. So that'll be that'll be a fun thing. I can't wait for that. Can you? Uh huh. And that event, by the way, uh, I got a list, Kimmy, of some things to look for. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got a got a list. You're gonna be you're gonna be going through some back issues and things. I'm gonna tell you that much. And you know, also I look for treasury editions, and I also look for limited edition comic books. Mm-hmm. I got the list. It's ready. Mm. Are, are you ready? Mm. Uh, yeah, I know you are. I know you're. I know you're looking forward to that. But right now, what we're going to do, Kimmy, is go back in time a little bit. Yes, we're going to go back in time, and we're going to talk about Superman here. This is a job for Superman. Up, up, and away! Now, what we have here, by the way, that was the voice of Superman in so many different forms. Uh, The person who did that was Bud Collier, and Bud Collier was the original voice of Superman on the radio show, the old-time radio show, starting way back in 1940. Did it till 1950, I believe. And turned down to uh, do the television show and also turned down doing the movies. But he was also the voice of Superman in the original cartoons in the 40s and then was dusted off in the 60s with the filmation version of uh, Superman cartoons that came to be that played forever. I mean, decades plus on CBS in Saturday mornings. And to me, he will always be the voice of Superman and Clark Kent. Now, we're going to hear a sample of his work here. But what is really standing out, what we get to hear here is one of the creators, there were two, of Superman. And Kimmy did guess right just a little while ago at the beginning of this episode. Jerry Siegel was one of the creators. He was the writer, and the artist was Joe Schuster. Now, Jerry and Joe created Superman when they were very young. It took a long time for him to get published, and you'll find out, he actually mentions this in an interview. Now, this interview is rarely heard. It was on... Now, what's interesting, this is part... First of all, the interview was conducted by a a big-time entertainer in the day, not really remembered now, unfortunately, by the name of Fred Allen. Think sort of like uh, Jimmy Fallon of the day. Mm Mm-hmm. Johnny Carson of the time period. Uh, Very popular, very risque to some. He would get in trouble with censors and things like that. All right, so he was kind of like the bad boy of broadcasting way back when. Had a huge audience. Jerry was on that show, but... That excerpt was utilized by the independent news company convention, yes, a bunch of newspaper publishers, back in 1940, to promote Superman. Mm -hmm. Now, what we hear in this two-part interview thing is, number one, we hear Jerry being interviewed by uh, Alan. And Mm -hmm. Alan is interviewing him. And it's interesting because Jerry, Jerry, to me, sounds a lot younger than he is. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, now, I had you listen to this ahead of time. I rarely do that, but I wanted you to hear this mm-hmm. before we did the interview. Uh, he sounds nothing like he, I think you would imagine him to sound like, does No, he? no. I want you to think Big Bang Nerd times 100. Mm-hmm. Correct? Right. And he was a nerd's nerd. I mean, 
beyond what I think any of us can really imagine. And, and he, he, he was born in the wrong time period. Mm-hmm. Now he would be in, he would have been more accepted and more socially comfortable. You can tell he is nervous with this interview. Now the jokes, some of the jokes and stuff, they fall flat because they're just totally, we have no relevancy to them. They're, they're lame. I will admit that. Okay. Mm-hmm. But back then they weren't, but he is trying to be, funny because they've obviously given him some cue cards or whatever to read you know respond back and it does fall flat i feel sorry for him when it comes to that part Mm -hmm. okay but you get some inside things on superman now i also know that right okay remember the 135 and thirty-five magical check in which he has signed over the rights to superman and happened only about two years and he's already seen and you get this is why this is so cool the opening of this will give you an idea just how big Superman is in pop culture within a two-year time span. It is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. That $135 check, I know, it doesn't seem very big to him. Although he is being paid extremely well at this time period because he is still writing Superman. He's writing the comic book, Superman comic book, action comics, and also the daily strip, which includes Sunday. He's doing all that. Mm -hmm. And Joe is doing the art. But right at this time period, Joe's getting some assistance to help with the art as well. His vision is going, by the way, at this Mm -hmm. time period. He's going blind, Mm -hmm. which will later, you know, come to a big thing in the world of Superman uh, when he is completely blind and is without insurance and things like that. We won't go down that path. One of the things I do stress is, before you listen to this, is read a book called Superboys. It's the amazing adventures of Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, the creator of Superman by Brad Ricca. And we have a link to that right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. It'll talk about which one had a parent that was killed in a robbery and how that influenced Superman. Also, you'll hear in this interview, especially with the Independent News Company convention, you will hear the person who bought Superman for $135. (laughs) Jerry does not like him. Joe does not, they do not like him by this Mm. time period. You'll find that out in Superboys, by the way. He is not a fan of him at all by then. And I don't like the guy when I hear him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, I want to point out sound quality. This is not the best of sound quality. It was not recorded digital back then. It was recorded not even in standard analog. There was no tape. It was recorded on a recording device that was very similar to a record player. And it can be rough. But it has lasted time. It wasn't meant to last over 75 years. It just wasn't meant to. Mm -hmm. And it has. We're lucky. And one other thing I want to point out is the speed is right. How do I know this? I know Fred Allen's voice. I know Bud Collier's voice. I I grew up listening to Bud Collier because I'm a geek on so many different things. Bud Collier interacts in this as Clark Kent and as Superman. And it is the voice. The speed, the pitch is correct. Fred Allen's voice, speed, pitch is correct. So when you hear Jerry Siegel for the first time, and I'm sure it will be the first time you've ever heard him, it is correct. That is his sound. That is the father, one of them, of Superman. So let's go back to 1940. Let's check in and find out what's going on in the world of Superman with Jerry Siegel, Fred Allen, and the Independent News Company Convention, and of course Superman, on the Riley and Kimmy Show. Presenting America's number one comic strip character. Look at the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, young America's stalwart idol whose astounding exploits are responsible for the unprecedented monthly sale of 800,000 copies of Action Comics magazine and over a million of the quarter copies of Superman magazine. Hailed from Maine to California as the hero of the hour, Superman appears in 248 daily and Sunday newspapers, is on the air three times a week, has been licensed to manufacturers of dolls, games, Play suits, raincoats, jigsaw puzzles, chewing gum, candy, balloons, and a host of other products. 
and beginning in January 1941, will appear in a series of Paramount animated cartoons to be released monthly in 4,000 motion picture theaters throughout the United States. Young America waits anxiously for each new issue of Action Comics and Superman to hit the newsstand. Hey, listen! A new Action Comics just come out, and boy, has it got swell adventure and Superman in it! Parents approve of Superman because he makes no use of guns or other weapons, but fights a never-ending battle against crime and oppression. His motto, strength, courage, justice. Over 100,000 boys and girls in the United States and Canada are members of the Supermen of America, a club dedicated to Americanism. One mother says... My boy is eight and can't seem to get enough of Superman. I should like to thank the publishers of Action Comics magazine for including a health page in every issue. Billy has been eating his cereal and drinking his milk regularly since Superman told him to do so. And finally, recognition for Superman from some of the most famous radio programs on the air. Bob Hope, Eddie Cantor, Kay Kaiser, and last but far from least, the inimitable Fred Allen. Listen. Who is the most popular comic strip character in the newspapers today? I give up. It's Superman. You mean our guest tonight is Superman? No, not Superman. Our guest tonight is the man who originated Superman. He has written all of Superman's exploits since this idol of millions made his first public appearance. He's Mr. Jerry Siegel. Good evening, Mr. Siegel. Good evening, Fred. So you are the man behind Superman, Mr. Siegel. Uh, No, I'm just one of the men, Fred. I write the situations and the dialogue, and the strip is drawn by my collaborator, Joe Schuster. Well, you seem uh, seem rather young to be the instigator of this highly successful feature, Mr. Siegel. How old are you? Twenty-five. And how long have you and Mr. Schuster been working on your high-voltage Robin Hood? We, st- we started about eight years ago, but Superman has been in print only the past two years. Well, what caused the delay? Cirrhosis of the batteries? <laughs> No, Fred. It took us six years to sell Superman. Uh He was turned down by almost every comic editor in the country. Well, they laughed at Fulton with his steamboat, you know. (laughs) I guess around your home, Superman was known as Siegel's Folly. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me, where did your strip first appear? In May 1938, Superman came out in a magazine called Action Comic. Was he well received? The strip attracted so much attention that the publishers decided to give Superman his own magazine. And his popularity increased then by leaps and bounds. Yes, Fred. Today, Superman is in 218 newspapers, reaching 20 million people. He's in magazines, on the radio, and now he is going to appear in Paramount Shorts. Well, who, just who is Superman supposed to be, Mr. Siegel? He isn't old Frank Merriwell with a dynamo in his union suit, is he? (laughs) Uh, No, Fred. Superman is a super being who came from the planet Krypton. He uses his tremendous powers to fight evil and injustice. He can do about anything, can't he? Uh, Superman can run faster than a bullet travels. He can lift an ocean liner out of the water. And uh, he can even stop a train with his bare hands. Can he open a Pullman window? Uh, Easily, Fred. What a man. I noticed that Superman is always benefiting humanity. Yes, Fred. He saves people from floods, stops wars, and he's always breaking up crime rates. Well, fortunately, Superman only exists in your imagination, Mr. Siegel. If he stamped out all of our crime, J. Edgar Hoover would be reduced to playing bits on gangbusters. <laughs> now, tell me, how far ahead do you have to write your strips? I usually keep three months in advance. Oh, you're so afraid of your syndicated Frankenstein? Uh, No, it's Mr. Ellsworth, the editor, and my wife. They get after me. They do, huh? Why don't you get Superman after that? (laughs) Well, it must be a wonderful... It must be a wonderful feeling, Mr. Siegel. Twenty million people waiting with bated breaths to see if Superman is going to pull up the Holland Tunnel and blow the Paris through it for a spitball. (laughs) 
And you... <laughs> and you are the only... It's Mr. Holland. Thank you a lot, Mr. Holland. <laughs> Every time we plug the tunnel, Mr. Holland claps. You know, it's very nice of you. And uh, you are the only man in America who knows what's going to happen. I don't feel any different, Fred. Oh, you're just being modest, Mr. Siegel. After all, you dominate a muscular marble with a dual personality. When Superman isn't Superman, he's he's merely disguised as a reporter, isn't he? Uh, yes, he's Clark Kent, a meek little chap with glasses. When Clark has to perform a miracle, he switches to that uh, Superman harness. Yes, he wears athletic tights and a long cloak. Well, what I can't figure out is this, Mr. Siegel. Now, how does he change his clothes so fast? Well, after all, he's Superman, Fred. <laughs> I wouldn't care if he was Gypsy Rose Weinstein. <laughs> Nobody can get into that long underwear ensemble in less than five minutes. Now, how does Superman do it? Uh, confidentially, Fred, he wears his outfit under his business suit. Oh, when he's Clark Kent, he has those streamlined bell brigands on underneath. Is that it? <laughs> right. He's always ready for action. Well, if he wears woolen underwear all the year round, he sure gets action. Look, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you a lot, Mr. Siegel. I certainly enjoyed this opportunity to get the lowdown on Superman. It's always a pleasure to talk about my protege, friend. Say, confidentially, if your jumbo Peter Pan can use a part-time job, I have a little chore coming up around the first of the year. Superman is good at lifting things, isn't he? Uh, yes, Fred. Uh, do you want him to pick up something? Yes. Uh, my option. <laughs> I'm afraid that's the one thing that even Superman can't do. I get it. Uh, th good night, Fred. Good night, and thank you, Mr. Jerry Siegel. And now it gives me great pleasure to present to this convention the man who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a high-powered bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands. Superman, who walks around among ordinary mortals, Disguised as mild-mannered Clark Kent. And here he is, Clark Kent. Hello, everybody. I just want you to know that I consider it a rare privilege to say a few words of greeting to the members of the Independent Magazine Wholesalers Association of the South. But I should like to take this opportunity to change to Superman. In behalf of my publishers, publishers of Action and Detective Comics magazines... I want to welcome you to this independent news company meeting. May I also say that I'm very happy to be here with wait you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've got something to say here. Say, who are you? Who am I? Do you ask who I am? That's what I said. Who are you? Why, I'm Harry Donenfeld, your boss. My boss? Huh. I never even heard of you. You've never heard of me? No. Why, you... Look, I took you off a drawing board and made a man out of you. I splashed your name from coast to coast. I put you in magazines, on the radio, and in newspapers. I just completed the arrangements to put you on the screen. And you never heard of me. Step aside, Superman, while I say a few ways of greeting to Curly Sandoval and Ruth Wiener and the rest of my friends here. Superman doesn't step aside for anyone. Say, I think what you need is a little trip up in the air. Come on. Hey, ouch! Let me go! Let me go! Sorry, you need to be calmed down. So up we go. Up, up. How do you like it up here a thousand feet in the air? I don't like it. I got a weak stomach, and any minute I'm going to lose it. Please take me down. Okay. Here we go. Here we are. Ooh. Where are we? Where am I? Why, we're back at the Independent News Company meeting. Oh. Thank God. Now look, Superman. Let's be friends. No more tricks, please. Okay, we'll be friends. And just to prove that I am your friend, I'll fly you back to New York when the convention is over. That's what you think. For my money, an airplane is fast enough. <laughs> Look at Harry run. Well, goodbye and good luck. Find archive podcasts of The Riley and Kimmy Show at RileyandKimmy.com.